Hey everybody, Ben here from the Burnout Podcast and welcome to Top 5 Friday where we have a look at the top 5 somethings normally to do with Blood Bowl. Now, we've spent the last few weeks taking pretty deep dives into the dungeons of Dungeon Bowl. So it seems just about time that we take a look at the top 5 Dungeon Bowl college teams. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at my top 5 picks. Now there's only 8 teams in Dungeon Bowl. So we're looking specifically at the college teams here. Which are generally a mix of different teams with different positionals. It's a very cool way to shake up Blood Bowl teams. And um, I guess the other thing to mention is that this is based on the teams themselves not the wizards and the wizards are very awesome and definitely change up how the teams play we haven't used them as much as we would like to yet so when it comes to our play testing of games we've used the teams but we haven't used the wizards so this is going to be about the teams themselves and not their wizards anyway onwards to the top five dungeon bowl teams Number five for me is the College of Metal. Now, I love this college so much. It is full of blockers. So uh, this college is made up of the Orc Lineman, Human Lineman, Orc Blitzer, Human Blitzer, Black Orc Brawler, Orc Big and Blocker, the Imperial Nobility Bodyguard, the Corn Berserker, and the Orc Thrower as well. But with one secret ingredient which makes this team so well-rounded. And that is the Black Orc Goblin Bruiser. So this team, this team has got excellent mid-range linemen. Okay, you've got a choice between the human and the orcs, basically. So movement 5, strength, at, well, they're all strength 3, but movement 5, armor 10, or movement 6, armor 9. So you've got the cheap dudes are going to be there and they're going to be pretty decent for bashing now when it comes to dungeon ball it really is a key on two factors now speed can be really useful but mostly it's agility and strength and the college of metal does have plenty of both of those this team can take 0 to 6 of those bodyguards so that's the big and blockers movement 5 strength 4 that's black or brawlers movement 4 strength 4 but brawler and grab now those guys become awesome in the dungeon bowl situation that brawler is going to save you the fact their strength four and armor 10 plus is going to save you and even though movement four tends to be a little bit slow on the blood bowl pitch in a dungeon it really isn't that bad so you get those integral skills to be able to just smash things around and when it comes to wanting to smash things around you've got blood seekers available as well now normally on this team you're going to take one or two of those guys and they're going to be your pseudo big guys okay because this roster does not have strength five but it's got a ton of excellent strength four and the linemen are great too but it is backed up by the stunty option now a stunty option in a dungeon bowl situation is so so important three plus plus with that stunty ability to just go into anywhere this team can work together brilliantly brawler grab that takes a two die block maybe a one die block and gives you that little bit of advantage and that grab means you can pass them down and out of the way that grab ability is going to help you control the avenues that your goblins can then run down and because in the dungeon bowl situation you are going to need to take some dodges and the cool thing here, there's those goblins. If you've got a one little avenue, you are only ever basically two, three plus dodges from a breakthrough. And when you get that ball and you're going to go for the touchdown, your opponent is going to have some people. You're going to have some goalkeepers there. Strength four guys can generally speak and dislodge them and your goblins can run through if you don't get a chance to kill them. So that's for me why the College of Metal is in the top five. Number four, it's the College of Beasts. So this college is just all about raw power. But as one sneaky suspect in the fact that their lineman, the worst player on this roster, is a Chaos Beastman. So that means that every player basically here gets to be strength four once per turn. Once per turn, somebody can make a strength four blitz. Your linemen are always going to be able to have that strength four power. Now, strength three is the average strength in Blood, in, in blood Bowl, but in Dungeon Bowl, those teams that have strength 4, those teams that have strength 5, have a distinct advantage because the ability to get additional supports is really limited. So those colleges that can leverage that strength 4 or strength 5 get a really big advantage for the majority of the game of Dungeon Bowl. So this roster, you've got Chaos Beastmen Runners. You've got Nurgle Pestigors and Corn... Uh, yeah, Corn Corn Gores. There we go. So that you can take four of those. You've got Chaos Chosen Blockers as your blockers. 
and then you get a selection of other players. You can take up to two Necromantic Werewolves. So you get that movement eight. So you've got some strength. You've got that frenzy. But you also get up to three big guys. Minotaurs, Croxagors, Rat Ogres, and Corn Bloodspawns. So this college is going to be excellent at taking out slower pillar defense teams. The Beastmen are going to be able to two-die block most other linemen roles. They're going to be able to take a one-die block on most blockers, which is absolutely huge. And with a bit of support, they might be able to face up to a big guy. But you've got those Chaos Chosen blockers here. So you've got your own strength four pieces to counter that as well. So you've got your blockers to be your goalkeepers or to face up against theirs. And you've got those Beastmen that can flex. You've got the Corn Gore, you've got the Pest Gore. So you've got a bit more opportunity there as well. And you do have... The possibility of those movement eight werewolves too. Now, speed is turning out to be uh, less of a massive advantage in Dungeon Bowl, unless you are kind of a stunty, dodgy player, because yeah, it's going to be bad dodges if you don't have the strength to push through. Minotaur, Croxagor, Rat Ogre, Bloodspawn. These are huge tunnel clearers any one of those now the downside of this roster is that your lineman is 60k so it's very expensive to get too many of your specialist positionals actually on the pitch however one minotaur is going to be able to open up most corridors when you are backed by those beastmen who have got good movement and good strength this roster fills out and is potentially the strongest one in dungeon bowl it lacks that stunty dodge element. Nobody on your roster gets dodge, okay? And the only one who can get dodge basically is the werewolves on primary skills here. So this is kind of going to be the most... It's it's a weird roster. It's fast enough. It's mid-range enough. You can punch dudes pretty handily, but you are going to have the toolkit here to absolutely destroy other mid-range teams so if there's another team with one big guy your big guy should beat their big guys if they've got blockers your blockers and your linemen should be able to beat their blockers and when it comes to their linemen your guys here with a cheeky blitz should be able to two die almost anybody that for me is why the college of beasts is number four Number three is the College of Heavens. So this is a weird college. It is essentially a Lizardman team with a couple of other players added. So Skink, Runner, Lineman, Nobility, Blitzers. This is pretty sweet and you can take up to four of them. Up to six Lizardmen, Sauruses, two Human Throwers and the, up to two Chameleon Skinks as well. So you've got like this weird mixture of players. It is essentially a Lizardman team. You can take up to six of those Sauruses and an unlimited number of Skinks. You've got the Human Thrower and Passing in Dungeon Bowl is actually better than you'd think. You've got the opportunity to ricochet off walls. You can do some stuff and Sure Hands is definitely going to come in handy. The ability to take that 2 plus Quick Pass is going to be really useful too. So as far as throwing goes, actually having the Human Thrower on this team is pretty useful. However, it's not... It's not beat around the bush. The ability here to take up to six Saurus blockers with movement six. They are the fastest of the blockers. So you are going to be able to spread through the dungeon very quickly. And when, once they're in position, they are going to be very well set to help defend and protect. But for me, the reason that this roster gets a slight edge on the other ones, and don't get me wrong, most of these teams are a really tight pack. It's the fact that you've got movement 8, edge 3 plus stunty dodge pieces. So you've got the ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe from a blocker point of view with most other teams. College of Metal is going to have maybe a slight advantage in the block war here um, because their blockers tend to have a little bit of spice. But let's face it, movement 6, armor 10 plus, strength 4 is very, very good. So those Sauruses are going to be just fine. And you've got those Blitzers too. So this team is remarkably fast and actually quite agile. Those Blitzers having block and catch. And with the Skinks having movement 8 and edge 3 plus. If you get the ball, you've got a really good way. You've got a really good opportunity of spreading it out around the uh, around the dungeon. But like we talked about with the... Um, with the College of Metal. This one here, having access to stunty dodges, is absolutely huge. You've got those pieces in the Croxagore, and to be fair, the uh, Nobility Blitzers, to punch a hole. You only need a slight hole to run through or to jump over, and the fact that these guys here are movement 8 and have that stunty dodge ability, it, it means that you've got 
a really good opportunity to swoop around. You can split your force up. You can come from different angles and different directions in those tunnels with only a couple of turns of movement because actually eight squares in a dungeon can take you a long way. So you've got those skinks to be a really good scoring threat. And like I said with the goblins, these guys are only a couple of three plus plus dodges away from being on the other side of their goalkeepers. And once you've got there, all it is is a cheeky human throw of pass two plus, maybe a pass three plus there, straight across, three plus catch, three plus touchdown. Number two is the College of Life. So this is a very weird and wacky selection of teams. We've got Halflings, we've got Snotlings, we've got Wood Elves, and we've got Nurgle. So this college is all about things that live and also things that die. So you've got disease, you've got fungus with the shrooms, you've got the life element to the, the forests of the moot um, of Atholoran. You've got all the living elements here. But realistically, what this team has is a little bit of everything good. Okay, huge amount of players that can be taken in this team. Halfling hopefuls, Nurgle rotters, uh, Snotling linemen, Wood Elf linemen. Those are your linemen, okay? So you've got Strength 2 stunty pieces, Strength 1 stunty titchy pieces, Wood Elf linemen, so you add 2 movement 7 pieces, and Nurgle rotters, who are Strength 3 for a bargain of 35k. So you've got the ability here to tailor your team. If this team was made up entirely of those linemen positionals, you'd still have a great opportunity to do most things that you want to do. All of those guys, Wood Elf linemen, not cheap at 70k. Everybody else absolutely is. So you've got that selection. Then you've got the runners. So we can take Stilty runners, Halfling catchers, and Wood Elf catchers. So that's movement 8, strength 2, dodge. Halfling catcher, movement 5, sprint, catch. Okay, all right. They're only movement 5, but in a dungeon, that's not too bad. You've got that stunty... Um, that stunty dodge combination of three plus uh, the stilty runner is a great piece at movement six and having that integral sprint means that this dude is running around nine squares the downside is that even though it is a strength one snotling it is not titchy so it's only a three plus plus dodge but you've got those alignment now there's no swarming here so you can't sneak extra snotlings in those snotlings that you've got you need to spend a turn to bring on but having that two plus oh it's just insane We've just talked about this. Any kind of gap in a dungeon, being able to stunty dodge through some tackle zones is going to be huge. Now, I love playing Snotlings, and the reason I love playing Snotlings is because most of the time you can just pick up a player and put him wherever you want to. In a dungeon, that is huge. You can cancel assists. You can tag players you don't want to. You've got sidestep in those Snotling players to just bounce around and go wherever you want to go. So that is a very great set of players. And... You also get war dancers, two war dancers, and every life team should take two war dancers. Block, dodge, leap. Now, this leap element in a dungeon is fantastic because you are reducing the negative modifiers by one to a minimum of one. So, this guy into two tackle zones is a three plus dodge. It's not a three plus dodge, sorry, it's a three plus leap. Now, you've got the alternative there of actually just taking the dodge instead, and there are going to be times where one's better than the other, depending on how your reroll situation is. But a four plus dodge is going to be a three plus leap for the most of the time with this Wood Elf War Dancer. So you've got Snotlings that can just two plus wander through tackle zones. You've got the Halflings who can three plus wander through tackle zones, and you've got the Wood Elf War Dancer who most of the time is going to be able to just dodge through stuff or jump straight over it. That is an insane diff. That's an insane toolkit to be able to bash through a dungeon. Now the downside is all that garbage, um, all that stuff is garbage when you are trying to go toe to toe in a combat situation. That's where the blockers come in. You can take up to four halfling hefties. Yeah, you can take up to four halfling hefties, and in a dungeon bowl environment, okay, maybe that bit of fend is going to be quite useful. Not for 50k. What you can take, which is going to be very useful, are the Nurgle Bloaters. Four Nurgle Bloaters. Now, this roster can get very expensive, but you've got Snotling as your lineman. You've got Nurgle Rotters there to be your cheap strength three fodder. 70k. 100k is going to get you two Snotlings and two Rotters. That's a quarter of your maximum roster for 100k. That means you can spend the rest of your money picking a subset of players this is like the best version of the green thunderbird ever it's okay i've got a box here and what's inside the box whatever you think you're going to need two nurgle rotters okay 
they're going to fill the tunnel for 70k. Two war dancers, they're going to be able to do everything. You've got some snotlings there. They're going to be right able to run around and just jump through gaps when they need to provide assists. Two Nurgle bloaters, potentially. That strength four block and just the insane amount of resilience is going to make them brilliant goalkeepers. And even though movement four is not the fastest in a dungeon, you're going to have time. Like they should be, You should be able to bring them up to the corridor that you need them in. Uh, you get a Wood Elf Thrower as well. You get Fungus Flingers. You can actually take up to four Fungus Flingers. And Secret Weapon is not a rule in Dungeon Ball. So you can just go nuts with Bombardiers. You can only throw one bomb a turn. So even though it's fun and hilarious, you can't go to town. But a couple of these guys for 40k it means that actually you can send one that way, one that way. You can bring them on with the teleporter later in the game and just go and stand in a corner and throw bombs. Because actually, you know what the downside of Dungeon Ball is? People get... They get clumped up whether it's in a corridor or caged around the ball having access to those fungus flingers as well who are movement five with dit with stunty titchy dodge so they're still two plus plusing everywhere can't move and bomb unless you have running pass but you can then bring them up to where you need them to be and if your enemy is caging up if you've got a chunky death team or metal team and they've caged up a tree you just start throwing bombs at them. And when the ball comes out, you've got a selection of players able to run in and grab the ball, including some fun hoppers. Now, that pogo ability is going to give you a three plus leap forever, ever, ever. And that is also going to be incredibly useful. So you've got war dancers that can jump over stuff. You've got hoppers that can jump over stuff. You've got snotlings that can run around stuff. You've got bombers that can bomb stuff. You've got bloaters to hold the line. You've got cheap linemen there and a different choice of them. Some strength two, some strength one, some strength three for bargains. We're not even done yet. You can take, I think, is it two? Two big guys as well on this team. Treeman trained trolls and the nurgle rot spawn as well now they are all slow and invariably um the better choice there is kind of the tree man but there's no hearts there's no touchdowns in dungeon ball once that tree man gets rooted he's stuck and the rot spawn and the trolls are gonna need to be looked after because they're really stupid so as far as a big guy selection goes this is probably the vulnerability of this team but it's not bad. I mean, trolls in this format, bargain, 150k, you get that mighty blow, you get strength 5, you get great resilience. Couple of trolls, couple of bloaters, it's a chunky investment, but those are going to be the dudes that hold those corridors down. Maybe just one troll, two bloaters. What a great goalkeeping set, what a great bit of defense there. Uh, the College of Life is just got everything. The clever thing here is that your agile stuff, very fragile, very weak. The strong stuff, very slow, and a bit of a liability. So I like that mix, but the College of Life, insanely fun, but still only my number two. Number one for me is the College of Fire. And this one comes in the starter set. And the team that you get in the starter set is already offensively good for Dungeon Ball. So the College of Fire is basically dwarves and ogres with a little bit of corn in there as well. So it's a really cool mix of players. We've got dwarf blockers, we've got noblars, and we've got corn bloodborne marauder linemen, which might be the longest player name out there. Anyway, that's your linemen assortment. You may think, okay, those are some pretty good players. Now we've got the noblars, and the noblars, everything is true of the noblars that we just, just, I, I'm not going to lie, I just gushed about with the snotlings. Stunty, Titchy, Dodge. So they've got that sidestep element. They're 15k. They've got that food five movement. You technically can throw them. Risky throwing teammate in a dungeon. If they hit a wall, they hit that wall and that wall hits back. Movement five, Stunty, Titchy, Dodge, 2 plus plus. These Noblars give you that just sneaky scoring threat at all points. And the rest of the team is just perfect for fighting in corridors. If you've watched any of our dungeon ball games, you will have seen how tough the College of Fire can be, and that's just with the starter set. That's not even maximized. That's not even being able to pick and choose what you want and what you don't. This team has got everything it needs to succeed. We don't have long-range scorers. We don't have huge speedy players on the College of Fire. But what you do have is the ability to just stop your opponent wherever they're going. And the Dwarf Blocker Lineman is the key to making that just well-rounded. Stunty Dodgy. 
stunty dodge nonsense right is going to be kind of the balancing factor in dungeon ball you're going to be able to just mm, i'll take a goblin three plus plus three plus plus here 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 fine great okay, great except when you're up against dwarves because they've got tackle they've just get free rolled tackle so a few dwarf block alignment all right they're expensive at 70k a piece but you're going to be able to afford them tackle block thick skull armor 10 plus strength three they are going to be able to hold those corridors i know i have tried to break through and even when you have noblars uh snotlings uh whatever you're trying to dodge through with skinks right that tackle is gonna hurt it is gonna hurt not only because it's gonna cost you that ability to just free roll the re-roll when that dwarf punches you and it's gonna be two dice it's gonna be two dice you don't get dodge and they've got block and that's the lineman the rest of this team is just designed for dungeon bowl. Dwarf runners, sure hands, movement six, which in a dungeon is motor, okay? Movement six, anti three plus, they've got that sure hands ability. They're going to be able to sweep in and get to wherever they need to the ball. So you've got those noblars at movement five, you've got those runners at movement six, and it gives you all the options you need because this team here is built to sweep and clear. You've got dwarf blood, bleh, 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 bleh. Two Dwarf Blitzers as well, good job, mouth. Um, so that movement five block... Edge 3 plus piece gives you a nice secondary ball carrier if you don't want to be fobbing it off to the Noblars. And then you've got the Dwarf Troll Slayers. Now, strength 3 dauntless pieces with frenzy and block in a dungeon bowl environment are fantastic. Even with no skills. But when you start baking in skills to these rosters, a cheeky bit of guard here and there is going to be massive. But on their own, We've already talked about the fact that the blockers on other teams, strength four and big guys at strength five, are going to be primary goalkeepers. They are absolutely going to be able to stop your opponent from getting through, from breaking through. We haven't even got to the ogres on this roster yet, but the dwarf troll slayers are going to do just enough to be able to take out those strength four pieces and have a good shot at strength five. And having a shot at strength five is something that not a lot of rosters can actually do. If you get a big guy in a tunnel, there's not a lot of options with most of these colleges except to bring up your own big guy or take bad blocks. The trolls there, movement five, plenty of speed in a dungeon with block, with frenzy, and that dauntless is just going to give you a good crack at any strength four player on what, like a two, three plus? And the big guys too. And it doesn't matter. You're not trying to necessarily murder them. You just need to push them out of the way because you do have Noblars who can just 2 plus dodge through any gap. So all you need to do is a single push and the Troll Slayer is going to give you that great opportunity. Um, but you can also take three Ogres. Outrageous. We've got Dwarves who are excellent but strength 3. You've got a Troll Slayer who can trump the strength 4, strength 5 pieces on your opponent's side. And then you've got three ogres, either punters or blockers, and that's where this roster just gets brilliant. Movement five, edge four plus. Edge four plus is excellent, okay? There are teams that would kill for edge four plus, but being able to move around and bonehead is the best of nega traits. No really stupid, they don't need to be looked after. This is just, okay, every now and again on a roll of a one, it's going to hurt you, but that's only one in six times. Dungeon Bowl games, we're looking at maybe 18 turns, okay? So each each ogre is going to bonehead three times. But actually, it doesn't matter. They lose their tackle zones, which is bad, but they don't disappear. So a, an ogre in a corridor, backed up with any other player, is still a wall. So it, it's still good, even when they bonehead, because they still force that movement to go through. So the ogres are fantastic. They will be there to support the dwarves. And if you've got two or three of those ogres in the corridors, blockers, this team has the strongest goalkeeper ability, I think, of any of the other colleges. There are some excellent colleges. We haven't even talked about the College of Death, because actually I think the agility angle it hurts them a little bit too much they've got a great amount of bash but they're a little bit slow but the college of fire has got speed it's got stunty dodge ability it just has everything you've got big guys to take on their big guys you've got reasonable mid-range players you've got excellent defense and you've got that stunty opportunity as well it is a really close run thing for me but the college of fire is looking so far like the best team in dungeon bowl it can be beaten we know it can be beaten, but you are going to have to play real hard. And the College of Fire has got the bits to undo it. So I played the uh, College of Shadow a good few times against the College of Fire now. 
and oh man i'm thinking i'm missing that stunty angle to just kind of run and dodge through but you know what it doesn't matter because if you are stunty dodging past dwarf blockers you're already in a load of trouble okay so the other three colleges that we haven't mentioned the college of death the college of shadow and the college of light they have all got strengths they really do and that's the such a good thing here about dungeon bowl we're talking about very small margins i'd say college of fire 55 percent college of light which was my team eight 45 percent college of light is kind of hurt because you don't have that strength angle with a big guy or decent blockers and you don't have the stunty dodge angle either so the college of light is really just a bunch of mid-range players trying to achieve and we've seen it in dungeon bowl that if you've got a strong goalkeeper contingent you are going to have a very tough time the advantage there is those block step or those block step elven blitzers but you only get two of them and in a dungeon they're going to get hit and when elves get hit they tend to quit College of Shadow, dude, it's Dark Elves and, and Skaven. Like, I absolutely love it. You do have goblins to go in there. So the College of Shadow is excellent. And when you start getting the wizards involved as well, absolutely superb. Goblins give you that stunty angle. The downside of the College of Shadow is you have got nothing to take on the big guys. The best thing you can do is line up a very bad Witch Elf Blitz. And that is, there's no Strength 4, there's no Strength 5. This roster could have really done with a Warpstone Troll, with a Rat Ogre, with something just to be able to take on the Strength 4, Strength 5 pieces. It doesn't. You've got gutters, that's wicked. Those goblins with the baked-in stunty dodge are going to be able to break through, but it does mean that you are kind of punching up a little bit. And the College of Death. Now, the College of Death has got a bunch of chunk, okay? It is made up of, or it has the ability to take two mummies and four flesh golems. Is it four? It might be six. I think it's four. That's some chunky boy. That is solid defense. That is College of Fire level defense. Almost, but not well, there's strength four pieces in there. It's pretty good. You've got some ghouls, you've got some whites, that's wicked, but you don't have a huge amount of breakthrough potential. Ghouls with baked in dodge are going to be your best opportunity to break through. The downside is the mummies are slow, the flesh golems are fine, they're just not as good. So I think it really is College of Death 6, College of Shadow 7, College of Light 8. Now, this is just my take at playing a Few, a good few games of Dungeon Bowl now and looking at these teams and, and, and kind of playing through with them. Now we're going to be doing some uh, more Dungeon Bowl videos probably the other side of Christmas because it's such a good format. It's so good. It's just another way to play. Really loving it. The colleges have got the different angles. When you get the wizards involved, really, really cool. Um, and I just cannot wait to get these to the proper, proper Blood Bowl pitch because I think the College of Light, the College of Shadow are going to absolutely hum in 11s and that could be pretty sweet anyway guys please let me know what you think of this top five your mileage may absolutely vary this is my take but i love every single one of these teams and it, oh, take on the dungeon bowl challenge it's so good anyway guys thank you very much for watching we'll be back soon with more blood bowl content happy blocking thanks very much for watching we really appreciate your support if you want to help support the channel even further please like and subscribe or come join us on our patreon we have early access to content we get loads of feedback from you guys and we try and do competitions as much as we can or you can get yourself some bonehead podcast merch on our spreadshirt site so if you want to support a team especially for the bonehead championship you can pick up a shirt a mug things like that it all helps support the channel and we really appreciate it anyway links below thank you very much Happy blocking.